wanted to just let everyone know <clears throat> I am at um, Houston's Methodist Hospital and I am recovering from atrial fibrillation and I want to I hope you can hear me I can't turn the television down because the remote is broken and I also have a filter for air conditioning in here because I am on the corona floor and I'll tell you about why that is in a minute but you can see it real quick I'll just show you it's this big filter that blew with the um, with the um, silver tube that goes up into the AC and it filters out the air so I'm not recirculating air they check on us through this um, window here to see how we're doing and then they come in they have a lot of um, <clears throat> me. they have a lot of things that are um, to put on like the gown, the gloves, the helmet, the mask, all that they put on out there and then they come in so they check on us like that and um, they have me hooked up to as you see monitors um, this is a monitor that it's actually portable, so I can get up and go to the bathroom and they don't have to wonder if I'm going to um, fall or anything or have to just be disconnected by them. So basically this monitor goes to the front of the um, nurse's station and they can monitor me that way and see if I'm still having atrial fibrillation. So atrial fibrillation happens, um, it's, very, it's like 200,000 Americans a year will get it, I believe. Oops, sorry, I dropped my cup. <laughs> and it is um, an arrhythmia, which basically means that the um, heart is not um, pumping blood properly through the body. The dangers of that is that it can cause you to have a blood clot. It can cause you to have a stroke and cardiac arrest. And so basically it's really, really important that if you have atrial fibrillation that you get to the hospital as soon as possible. Um, I kept hoping that I didn't have to go to the hospital because I just didn't want to go and be exposed to corona. So I I remember when this happened to me um, a couple of days ago, I was in the bed and all of a sudden I jumped out of bed and I couldn't breathe. I mean, I literally was, um, I felt like someone was suffocating me or I was aspirating, I felt like. Um, basically, every time you swallow, you know, your saliva, it goes down normally. Well, it felt like for me, I had a closure and it was going into my lungs. And it just felt like I couldn't breathe. Um, I had I had a major chest pain and I just was in a lot, a lot of distress. And so I actually went to the bathroom and my husband helped me, but I could hardly even get to the bathroom. He basically helped me, I don't even remember how I got there. And I have a bench in my bathroom, and I laid on the bench on my stomach because I just felt like I was going to throw up. I needed to be in that position so I wouldn't aspirate. So I laid on my stomach, and my head was hanging over, and I tried to throw up. And I don't know if I even threw up much, but he put a bucket underneath me. So I don't remember how much I threw up because I only had watermelon that night, the night before, you know. And so I just could not move. I was paralyzed, and my heart was racing. And even though I was laying in that position, and I was getting better breath in that position for some reason. And I think it was because basically if I lay back the other way, I have um, nodules on my thyroid that cause me to have sometimes a hard time swallowing. And um, I felt as though if I laid on my back, then I would have ended up having a more difficult time to breathe. So that's why I laid on my stomach on that bench. So after laying there for about, I don't know, an hour or so, my legs began to get paralyzed, my, my arms, the circulation of the blood through my body was really poor. So I wasn't able to like, I mean they were falling asleep basically, everything was like falling asleep. And I was just feeling like I'm gonna, like I'm gonna die, like this is how I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die here. So finally, I remembered that I had my Apple Watch. And on my Apple Watch there is a feature called the EKG or ECG, which stands for Echocardiogram and basically, um, when it does an echocardiogram, it will not detect a heart attack, but it will let you know if you need to get help immediately. So when I did mine, and it still says the same thing, it says atrial fibrillation. And as you see, it says, this is not 
this is an unexpected result. You should go talk to a doctor. And then it also says Apple Watch is not able to check for a heart attack. If you believe you're having a heart attack, contact a medical professional emergency. So when I saw that atrial fibrillation, I know it's serious. So I thought I need to go ahead and get to the urgent care or something. But I felt so weak, like literally. And I just felt like I can't even get the energy to do that. And I was hurting, my chest was hurting really bad. And I just kept thinking, I don't want my daughters to find me like this dead. So it went on for a while. I kept thinking it's going to stop. I'll do another one, but stop. It didn't stop. It kept staying atrial fibrillation. So when my husband got home, I um, decided I was going to go ahead and go to the urgent care. So I went to the urgent care. After I got to urgent care, they did an EKG. And it said the same thing as my watch said, atrial fibrillation. And they said, you need to go to the hospital. And I was like, really? I don't want to go to the hospital because I was worried about corona. And um, because I had not been tested that day, they could not say I was negative. Even though I was tested three weeks ago negative, they could not say I was negative that day. So I needed to go ahead and get the um, test done for the corona. But I couldn't put it in my nose because I have I have a mask between my nasal cavity and my, um, and my nose. So... Because of that, I have, until I'm able to get that removed, I can't put anything in my nose. So, well, they don't, they don't want to put anything in my nose. I don't know for sure if they could do it, but they just said they don't want to do it. So there was a mouth swab that I used last time I got tested. And they said when you get to the hospital, they'll be able to do that test. But until they're able to do the mouth, the neck, it's actually a, a um, it's like a strep, a strep test. <coughs> Oh yeah, and I've been coughing a lot, and they say that's a vagal response to stimulate or try to get your heart rate to get in, back in a regular rhythm. So they said that is normal, but in coughing up a lot, I am getting a little mucus, but it's not um, color, it's just a clear mucus. So anyway, so basically, I get to the hospital, and they tell me that I have to go to the corona floor because I have not tested negative yet, and they don't know if I'm positive. So that's why I'm in this room, this isolation room. And if you see behind me, there's the windows. They have these windows where they check in on you. And then they call you on the phone and ask if you need anything. And of course the doctors will um, also call you on the phone. Like they used to make rounds, they'll just call you on the phone. They'll, they'll look through there and they'll wave to you. And here comes my, my tech, he's getting ready to come in right now and get my vital signs. But anyway, I just wanted to say, this is a great watch. <coughs> I believe it saved my life. I'm on a lot of electrodes now, and it's a monitor that is um, something I can carry with me. So if I have to go to the bathroom, they don't have to come in and re, you know, attach me. They don't come in unless they're like doing vital signs or giving medicine. And I think that's really good because they don't know if I have corona. The other patients that are seriously corona patients that are on the floor, I'm praying that they're going to be okay. My situation now is getting better. It's been day, this is day three of having atrial fibrillation. And it's really irritating. It's very painful sometimes. They give me lots of medicines trying to find which one will stabilize me. Atrial fibrillation can cause you to have a stroke. It can cause you to have a blood clot. It can cause you to have cardiac arrest. So it's really important that if you have atrial fibrillation that you get to the doctor and you don't wait. I waited like a long time actually, you know, I should have went immediately when I felt this going on. But you know, you, your brain thinks you, you'll be okay, you'll get through it. And especially with corona, you don't want to expose yourself to anything at the hospital. But honestly and truly, I should have left like as soon as I had this symptoms, the pressure, the hard time breathing, I should have went to the hospital then. They're going to be coming in to check my blood pressure and everything in a few minutes and probably um, give me my medication. They're trying me a lot of medication to see which one can stabilize me. So anyway, um, the Apple Watch, I, I don't know what number it is, but it's the new, newest one they have out. Um, and like I said, you, you just go here and then you have to download the app and then you go here and... That's my last one, atrial fibrillation. So then you press this one. It won't work if I'm doing it this way. I have to be laying, I have to have my, my hand down. But you just put your finger here and it begins to do.
There it is. It begins to get your, your rhythm. So I have an irregular heart rhythm. Whenever the rhythm is where it's not going, like, like basically it should go up, down, up, down like that consistently. It shouldn't be a pause and it shouldn't be a big spike. So that's kind of like a basic way of knowing that there's something going on, but it will tell you if it's atrial fibrillation. So that's what I like, but it also gives you, um, you also have one for your heart rate, another app for your heart rate to see, because I've been running really high heart rate as long, as well as um, everything else with my, and it, and it feels like I'm always having to burp or, or cough, because it's like a, a response to try to help get my heart rate back into the right mode. I think that's a natural response of your body is to do that. But anyway, so this is day three. And um, I just want to give you guys a heads up so you can see what it's like to be in a corona ward. Like I said, this is the door they go through. That's the window they look at. That's the filter that filters out the bad air or any air that's in the room. So I'm not recirculating air. And um, I wish my television worked. But... I don't want them calling maintenance and bothering them. It's a little inconvenient, you know, but um, I hope I'm going to be negative and I can get in the regular force soon. I hope that my atrial fibrillation will get under control with medication. That's what they're trying right now. So anyway, um, pray for all these corona patients because I know they're doing worse than me. And I am um, actually able to talk now and able to breathe a little better, so I'm doing better. But thanks a lot for listening. And everyone should get an Apple Watch, especially anyone who is a patient of um, any kind, lupus patient, cardiac patient, any kind of patient, definitely get an Apple Watch. I'm all for it. Thanks a lot, and God bless.